Alright, so today we're looking at the KDE release of Linux Mint 12. Now I am looking at the release candidate as uh, the, obviously the final release has not become stable as of the time of the video. However, it shouldn't be long until the final release is out. And as an RC, it is quite respectable in that I haven't had too many bugs or crashes or issues to speak of. Now, basically, Linux Mint 12, as we all know, is based off Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, they're doing their own thing on the GNOME side with the Mint Shell ext uh, with Mint GNOME Shell extensions, and also with Mate, and they're also trying out the Cinnamon desktop as well. But I thought it's been a, it's been a long time since I checked out a KDE distribution, especially one uh, since I didn't check out Kubuntu 11.10 when it came out. So now is a good opportunity to test out both of those in the same video with Linux Mint 12. Now, it is KDE 4.7, uh, I think it's 4.7.2 to be exact, I will check that just briefly. But uh, essentially, as I've, as I've said before in, I believe, the Chakra video, KDE 4.7 is just an incremental improvement. It's not a total rewrite, and it's not anything to be, uh, it's not anything to be getting too excited or upset about, in that it just keeps slowly developing and adding feature after feature and improvement onto its uh, rather prolific platform of software that it has available. Um, so as far as Linux Mint is concerned, you get a good deal of software here, and they generally don't stick to just the Qt apps in uh, by Qt, I mean Qt, Qt developed. I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but one of my commenters said that it is pronounced Qt, so that's how I will say it. Uh, in that they do throw in quite a number of GTK applications in here as well, notably Firefox for your web browsing, Thunderbird for your mail, and then you've got a fairly limited set of other uh, K... KDE tools here for your internet, as far as your Bluetooth, your torrent, your instant messaging, and your dial-up tool for dialing up to your ADSL, etc. Now, one of the annoyances that I still kind of have about the breadcrumbs menu at the top here is that it's not quite as convenient as the big bar on the side that it used to have. So it is a bit of a shock to the system for me, and, I, and it is taking a bit of time to grow as far as getting used to going to that corner and clicking rather than just bumping the mouse back. So that is a bit of a complaint I have about KDE at the moment in general, but otherwise, I don't have too many issues with it. It seems to be quite uh, predictable in most senses. And the media, again, we don't get a, a huge slew of applications here. We just get some nice ones that'll get the job done. So we've got Amarok for your audio player. Uh, again, I think I prefer Clementine, but that is entirely personal opinion, and your mileage is going to vary. You've got K3B for your disk burning, which we're going to have a look at. We've got uh, Gnome M player for most of your media playing. We also have VLC there for the rest of your media playing. So I'm not exactly sure why we have two media players there, but for some reason I think they just have them there just for safety reasons and personal preference. Uh, we've got KMix for your sound mixing and also the YouTube client, which is Minitube. Uh, Minitube has, of course, made um, some pretty nice improvements recently, so you're definitely worth checking that out. I might be doing an app review on that in the near future. Under Office, standard LibreOffice here, along with Ocular, which is the document viewer. And then under Graphics, we have mostly KDE tools, with a few panorama tools also thrown in here, which is pretty nice. Now, as far as window effects goes, uh, window effects with KDE have been a hit and miss with me up until around uh, the beginning of 2011. Uh, it really started to take off as far as the uh, window effects being enabled out of the box and being very smooth and uh, not having any issues at all as far as frame rates or anything like that con is concerned, even with the open source drivers. Right now, I'm just using the open source driver for the Intel graphics, which is more than enough for everyday uh, compositing tasks and, uh, you know, fancy 3D effects. But as if you want to do anything like gaming, then you need to probably get the proprietary drivers for your system enabled. Now, my system is an NVIDIA Optimus uh, machine, so it doesn't really play too nicely at all, but the Intel graphics is more than enough for the needs that I have. So as you can see, all the transitions uh, amongst KDE are looking very smooth indeed. Uh, all the wallpapers, uh, they're all very high quality, and KDE has been known now for quite some time to really provide a very modern, futuristic, but clean desktop experience, and it's really nice to see here in Mint 12 as well. I've uh, got a, a lot of great Mint wallpapers here that, uh, that they have accumulated over the years, and there's really some nice ones in here that I would be more than happy to have on my desktop. Now, the default one, of course, we've all seen before in, in recent releases, and uh, and it's not too bad, but I find it a little bit bright. But as far as KDE it's, itself is concerned, I really feel like it's a very nice desktop in that it is slowly innovating, it's slowly adding features, and it's not shocking users with all kinds of new interfaces or new paradigms of doing things. It's very traditional in that Windows 7 users are really going to click with this. They're going to know where they are instantly, especially if you've come out of Vista any time recently. You're definitely going to feel straight at home here. And even if you want to get a taskbar, which 
looks and feels more like the Windows 7 taskbar, then you can simply add a particular widget which is in the default repositories, which is called Smooth Tasks. Now, I'm not ex exactly sure whether they've uh, installed it by default here, and it doesn't look like they have, but you can install it in the repos. Now, that's what I want to talk about next, and that is the Software Manager. Now, the Mint Software Manager, of course, has undergone some pretty nice work as of recent times, and unfortunately one of the bugs in the RC at the moment is that the Software Manager isn't wanting to stay open for any period of time. It instantly disappears, which isn't much fun for reviewers like me, but I imagine this is going to be ironed out before final review. Um, the Software Manager does do what it says on the tin, which is what you want it to do. Uh, it's probably not as stylish as the Ubuntu Software Center at this stage. Uh, I do believe you probably can install the Ubuntu Software Center via the repositories if you so wish um, but at the moment we do have the mint software manager and it does a nice job it neatly categorizes all your applications into the way uh, that a logical person would do it and it gives top rated applications and makes recommendations for you etc kde has a lot of power behind it and a lot of the a lot of the uh, window shortcuts and also the uh, keyboard navigation here with the k runner run interface is actually pretty snazzy as many people have seen before, the widgets possibilities on KDE are enormous. You can literally add anything you want here. And if you don't have, and if it doesn't have what you want out of the box, you can easily install many, many more widgets via the software manager or the uh, synaptic package manager, which you also, by the way, do get by default. So am I going to be sticking here for any period of time? It's a good question. I do like KDE and I definitely have to say that as of KDE 4.6, I really began to love KDE. 4.5 and 4.4 before that, uh, I would use it, but I really wasn't too appreciative of it in that things were a little bit cluttered and also the desktop effects were a bit hit and miss. And for a modern desktop, you really want to have something that looks nice. Uh, KDE definitely delivers, and as of the last uh, two years, really, it's been, it's been a very nice ride. Uh, however... I definitely feel like the convenience of, uh, of the more keyboard driven interfaces like GNOME Shell and Unity where you just hit the meta key, type and press enter. Um, I, I can't really beat that for productivity whereas KDE is fantastic but you have to click around a fair way to just uh, accomplish everyday tasks. Example, for instance, I can't click in the blank here to get this bar to disappear. I have to go over here and click the X. And same with the menu here, I can't really, I can't start typing and just press enter. I have to start typing and then if there's one option I can press enter and uh, if there's more than one then I have to choose with the mouse. Uh, for anybody who's a traditional desktop user this isn't going to come as any great surprise. Uh, it's going to be something very easy to implement and it's not really going to be much change at all. Uh, the, the menu and the, the way the tasks are managed and the way the windows are managed is all very reminiscent to anybody that has used Windows, uh, especially Windows Vista or Windows 7 for any period of time. And uh, they're really going to feel right at home here with the amount of widgets on offer. It's really going to feel like Windows uh, with extra configuration abilities and extra options and just a lot more power involved. Everything about KDE is customizable. Uh, contrary to popular opinion, uh, it is just as customizable as what GNOME 2 is. You can customize customize the application appearance, you can change the widget styles, you can change the colors. They've got a whole list of colors here that you can choose from, including some very nice darker themes. Uh, really anything about KDE can be uh, customized just as it is with any other Linux desktop environment. So you can really tailor this system to however you want to do it. And the system settings are extremely comprehensive as far as what they have on offer and the kind of stuff you can change through a simple GUI. So while I don't feel a compelling reason to use Linux Mint 12 KDE uh, for my regular base distribution, I still think it's a solid choice for anybody looking for a traditional computing experience, anybody migrating over from Windows, they're definitely going to feel right at home here. You get a lot of out-of-the-box software that will cover most of your everyday needs, uh, as well as all the things like codecs and browser plugins, Flash, etc., all comes out of the box. So you're ready to go from your install. Now I will apologize for the strange sound of my voice in that I have had a few throat issues over the last week and that's probably why you're wondering what my voice is up to. But apart from that, all is going well here and I thank you everybody for your continued support. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing if you would like this content on a regular basis. I did attempt to upload an app review earlier this week but I was having some audio recording issues which I will hopefully have ironed out relatively soon. 
If you would like to check out my other ramblings elsewhere on the internet, you can follow me on Twitter at InGalactic, and you can also check out my blog, infinitelygalactic.blogspot.com. And if you'd like to hang out with myself and other Linux YouTubers and developers, then check out the Linux Distro Community TeamSpeak channel, uh, where you can come in and have a live discussion with uh, with us and whoever else is hanging out in there. So if you have re if you have support uh, requests or if you have any feedback you'd like to leave, definitely leave a comment below or jump in on TeamSpeak. And if I don't see you there, I will see you in the very near future because there are definitely more videos coming your way.